Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all good? I hope so. Y'all listen, let's get into the second part of this Carlos and Mariah interview. And everything that I'm saying in this video is in my opinion. I'm not making any kind of claim or rendering any judgment. I'm merely reporting my opinions of the situation. The Copyright Act of 1976, Section 107, gives me fair use of these excerpts that we're going to use and analyze while I give my commentary and criticism along with some research. Okay, so let's get into it, y'all. So part two opens on the cliffhanger with Carlos saying that folks say that Dr. Jackie is the true villain of the show. And Mariah says, absolutely. And she said that Dr. Jackie never really cared for her. But then she says something that her mama told her once about older women. So let's listen to it. My mom would say this to me. Some older women don't respect younger, successful women. Does that not sound familiar? Have we not heard that said about Melody as it relates to Kimmy? That some people felt like Kimmy would act funny or she didn't like Mel because of the things that Melody has accomplished in her life. But you will have people saying stuff like, y'all swear older women are always jealous of younger women. That's ageism. That's not right. And I just be looking at comments like that. Like, first of all, it's not ageism. But you are hollering, hit dog. Because there are most definitely some older women out there who act like that. Okay, so next, then Carlos asked if she felt like folks protected Jackie. And Mariah said yes. And <laughs> she didn't understand why Jackie and Curtis would hide what they were going through in their marriage. And she said this. So I think seeing that um, is important. And why hide it? What, if it was Toya, they wouldn't hide it. Baby. If it was me, they wouldn't hide it. Why hide that? Like, it's real. It's why you're on a show. You can't just show the bits and pieces that work for you. You have to show the real shit. Okay, so that right there made me think about 1.0. Especially when Marcia was ready to quit. And Carlos said that he told him to just focus on the business, talk about black. And Carlos, in my opinion, has been coddling and protecting those folks since season two. But he let Destiny go for not sharing or bringing anything to the show. If you really sit back and think about it, if it wasn't for Wanda and the little beef Tisha had with Kimmy, they wouldn't have a storyline either. Because her bringing that pregnancy was crazy. In Marceau's words, they were throwing things at the wall to see if they would stick, in my opinion. Then they got into Toya. He asked Mariah what she thought about Toya. She said when she was casting for the show, folks would always tell her she needs to talk to Toya. Mariah said that Toya was the only one that she didn't know, but Toya was the epitome of a doctor's wife. She just thinks that Toya needs something for herself. So then Mariah asked him, what do you think about Toya? And listen to what he says. Toya reminds me of my mom in some ways. So when you said she needs something for her, my mother, 10 kids, same man, husband, my daddy, wow. um, was a housewife her entire life. Mm -hmm. The reason why I was sad, I mean, not, I was sad as a teenage boy for my mom because I felt like she wants more, but she knows it may come at the cost and the price of her marriage. Mm. Now, I promise you, I feel like this is the same thing he said about Tisha. He said that Tisha reminded him of his mom. Now, can anybody tell me how can Toya and Tisha remind him of his mom? They are like the complete opposites. Is the correlation with them being housewives? Like, yeah, y'all going to have to help me out with this one. But let's continue to hear what he says as he compares Toya to his mom. I said, when I look at Toya, she reminds me of my mother's generation of women from Detroit who gave everything to their husband and the kids. And when I look at Toya and her honesty about her marriage, I do believe, in my opinion, and this is no disrespect to Toya or Eugene, who I love, I love the both of them. I think Toya wants something. I'm not saying she wants a divorce or a new man. When I look at Toya, I look at a woman who wants something else 
besides what her reality is at the moment. Okay, so he's, it almost sounds like he's saying that his mom basically sacrificed her happiness for the marriage and the kids. And that when it comes to Toya, he just feel like she wants something more outside of what her reality is at the moment, right? When he said that his mom was a housewife her entire life, but he could tell that she wanted more. But she knew they was going to come at the cost of her marriage. So she stayed. I don't know why. But this made me wonder if this could be one of the many reasons that he feels a certain way about Mel leaving. Oh, boy. Is he seeing in Mel what he think his mom could have been or achieved if she would have just chosen herself? Not that she's just like, I don't want nothing to do with these kids. I don't want nothing to do with this marriage. But it almost sounds like she stayed for the kids in a way, in my opinion. And I just wonder if when he's looking at Mel, does he see what his mom could have been? And that maybe angers him. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Like sidebar, okay? I saw a clip of Diana Williams, Miss D, her new show from DD4L. And Diana and the OGs, they met up. It was Diana, Selena, Mimi, and Tina. And Mimi was sharing how hard it was and still is now for her since her father passed, right? And she said that she was so angry that she would see people with their dads and feel like and she'll, she'll be looking at them like, why you still got your dad? Why you still got your dad? Why you still got your dad? So after I saw that clip, it really made me wonder if that's how Carlos may feel about Melody. You could see how he spoke about his mom, that she was probably full of so much greatness and potential, but settled and stayed for the kids. That's just my opinion. But yeah, what do y'all think about that? And it could also be that he sees things in Mel that he wish he had. Maybe it's her personality or the way people love her or how she came in the game and has basically accomplished more than him. Because I promise y'all, sometimes I be feeling like he's also mad because he thought the kingdom was going to have a parking space over at Newbie. But that's just me. Okay. Now let's talk about when they got into the conversation about Phaedra joining Marriage to Medicine. Well, Mariah said that she didn't understand it because Phaedra wasn't married to medicine. She said that she felt like Phaedra deserved her own show because she's such a big personality and that she honestly felt like Phaedra wasn't there to work. She was just there to collect the coin. And she asked Carlos, you didn't see that as a producer? And of course, he tried to talk around the question, but Mariah kept her foot on his neck until he answered it. So Mariah says this. She wasn't there to work. She was there to collect a coin. And it was obvious. You didn't see that as a producer? I uh, listen. Was she there to work or was she there to collect this, a but, coin? But this is the thing about me. Was she there to work or collect I a coin? I said it on my Monday Did recaps. She work? No, I'm the one. Listen, one thing about me, that's why it, it bothers me when people want to talk about me, call me on my name, messy, whatever. What did he just do, y'all? What did he just do? Again, he made it about him. How did people want to talk about me, call me out of my name, messy, whatever? How did that go with what Mariah asked him? It didn't. That's what I be talking about when I say when there is a question that requires truth and depth. He talks around it and comes back with nothing. But he would change the focus of the conversation. Now, I never saw where Phaedra said any of those things he just said. But you know what? Let's hear what else he had to say. Why are you mad at me for commenting on what you're showing on a show? Yeah. You signed up to be on a show. I signed up to do these YouTube and podcasts. So I know that I'll get read for Phil. I don't care what y'all think about me. <laughs> Listen. Now. If that ain't the mustard calling the ketchup a condiment, I don't know what is. Because, baby boy, that's what we be trying to tell your folks. 
How are y'all mad at us for commenting on what you're showing on the show that you signed up to be on? Which is the same, which is the same thing that we be trying to say to you, Carlos. And you just said that you do the same thing that we do, but you would want to be mad at us going on your podcast, talking about folks trying to tear people down this, but you don't see that in yourself when most often we're not trying to tear anybody down. We're doing exactly what you said, commenting on what you're showing on the show that you signed up to be on and all that. I don't care what people say about me. That's a lie, in my opinion. I feel like he says that in order to convince himself of it is self-motivation. That's just how I see it. That's how I feel about it. Now he's finally going to get into explaining how he felt when he saw Phaedra on the show. First episode, I was like, it was good to see her back on television because she's great TV. After episode one, I said this publicly and I'll say it again. It is anticlimactic. Um, she has brought nothing to this season. She's a disappointment. She is there for the paycheck. Now, tell me, why doesn't he see any of this when it comes to 1.0 and 2.0? Especially 2.0. It can't be just because they from Michigan and they Libras and all that old superficial mess he be talking about. You can see it in everybody else, but you can't see it in your own show. That does not make sense to me. But y'all, what he's about to say next had me looking like, <laughs> yeah, this man has really turned a blind eye to Love and Marriage Huntsville. And he's given an I don't give an up attitude towards Melody, in my opinion. Listen to this. Mm. I was shocked, mm. shocked that at LaToya's um, wine event, when they were all at the table and Quad now, I'm not Quad, Phaedra has now admitted that she did switch her flight so that she won't be on the same flight as Quad. Because what I now understand about the environment of maritime medicine is, is sink or swim. It's, it's, it's like, it's sink or swim, mm -hmm. right? So she knew that if I'm around you, these other girls won't mess with me. So when Phaedra was at that dinner table with her real leather jacket and blonde tresses, and these girls are coming for Quad, y'all came on the show together. You knew Quad, you know Quad better than the rest of these girls. Mm -hmm. You sat there and didn't utter a word in defense of her. That man said that he was shocked that the ladies did not defend Quad when Phaedra was basically going in on her. And he couldn't believe it because all of them had come in together. But they just sat there and didn't say nothing. See, this is the type of talk that makes me wish every time he lets something like that come out of his mouth that I can pop up like Candyman and scare some sense into him. Because ain't no way you just said you were shocked by them not sticking up for Quad. But you weren't shocked by your own cast, Tiny Tim. You weren't shocked when Betty was barking at Mel. And all those ladies who she brought onto the show just sat there and didn't say nothing. Then other not one word. Tisha was down there smirking because we all we all know that she loved when somebody is going that mail. She loves that. And Kimmy was just looking shocked. But you know what Kimmy didn't do, Carlos? Bring that wisdom and that balance that you said she had. Or that heightened sense of maturity that you said she brings to conversations. She was just sitting there. Like she heard Beyonce say, look around, everybody on mute. That's how she was sitting. But we ain't heard you say that you were shocked by that. Or maybe is it because you told that lady to sickle, get her. I want you to get her when you go to that tea party. <laughs> if that's what you told the Carlos, allegedly. I mean, I'm just asking a question. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Wanda. <laughs> Look, then he says that he knows how to produce Phaedra. Let's hear him. I mean, baby, she came, she gave the girl, she gave the girls a fashion show. She, she said, she I'm not going to sweat it out. No. I am going to stay intact. I'm not going to, you girls work. I'm she here. looks I'm good. I'm here so I don't get fined. That's what it is. She looks amazing. She did. She does. I know how to produce Phaedra in the sense of you got to make you, her work. Make her work. Clock, yeah, yeah. clock in.
We bet you do. <laughs> we bet you do, Carlos. We bet you do know how to produce Phaedra. And you possibly produced her right out of a job. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Talk about some clock in. And you know, they let that clock out. <laughs> Baby, they still right on out there, though. Bravo said, when you got time for that bull? <laughs> so then, Carlos asked Mariah who would be her dream cast for Married to Medicine and if it was time for some of the OGs to be removed. This is what Mariah had to say. And in my opinion, she could have been talking directly to Carlos about Love and Marriage Huntsville. And just listening to Mariah, I feel like she would be a really good producer. Is it time for some of the OGs to be removed? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that they've gotten very complacent. I think that just like medicine, um, the shows have to evolve. And it's not evolving. It's not. And then even when they bring on new people, they stunt their growth. Mm -hmm. They won't allow them to prosper at all. They block them. And I don't understand. It's a, it could be, I'm telling you, it could be a, a, it is a good show, but it would be an amazing show if they, the producers just take their hand out of it and just let them ladies live. And their personal feelings. Let, like, for real, just let it happen. It's a group of good women. And if you really just let it happen the way it's supposed to, not tell people who to be friends with, who to ice out, then I think that things will happen the way they're supposed to. I agree with Mariah. Sometimes you have to let some of the OGs go, especially if they're not bringing anything. If they're not bringing anything to the table, they just getting a free check. Basically what y'all say Phaedra was doing. And did you hear her, Carlos, when she said, if the producers just take their hands out of it and let the ladies just be them? In the words of Tony Braxton, just let it flow. Just let it flow. It'll feel real. It'll feel authentic. And it'll really make the audience want to engage with the show. <clears throat> okay, next, he tells Mariah that he wants her back on TV and she said that she's ready to do it because she was born for this. And he tells her that she was born to be a reality star. And Mariah took that as shade and was like, that's like me saying you were born to be a blogger, honey. <laughs> so this is how Carlos explains away what he said. I am going to <laughs> redefine what reality star means. It's the reality of your life. It's, it's reality unscripted things. That's what I meant. Just like I was born to entertain. Oh, you're entertaining, yeah. but you are meant to be on reality television and make a mass millions off of that and multiple streams of income. He said he's going to redefine what reality star means. That he's going to describe it as it's the reality of your life unscripted. But isn't that... <laughs> Isn't that already the definition of a reality star? Like, th this can't be real, y'all. <laughs> like, it, it, this just can't be real. Then he tells Mariah that she is made to be on reality television and make mass millions and make multiple streams of income off of that. Now, when that was male, he told her that she was leaving her husband behind. <laughs> This guy is faker than his laugh. I just don't get him sometimes. He was not like this when it was Hollywood Divas in the next 15, when he did the Super Sweet 16 for Regine. He was not like this. So when I'm looking at him now, it's just crazy to me. Y'all listen, tell me what you think about this. What do you think about Carlos saying that Toya reminds him of his mom, which is the same thing he said to Tisha, I think. What do you think about him saying that folks shouldn't be mad at him for doing commentary on a show that they decided to be on? And what do you think about him saying that he was disappointed that the other ladies did not stand up for Quad when they've known Quad longer than they've known Phaedra? Like, let me know what you think about that. Oh, yeah, wait, wait. He also said he was disappointed that Mariah didn't give him Married to Medicine. And she said that she could produce 
they could like they could produce something together, which I hope was a joke, because in my opinion, Mariah seems like a producer of integrity. But she said, you know, we could do something like a love and medicine. And he was like, oh, yeah, like a love and medicine Atlanta. Would y'all want to see Carlos create a show with Mariah? Or would y'all like to see Mariah and Mel do something together? I already know what y'all going to say, but just get down in the comments. Tell me anyway. All right. Get down in the comments. Let's talk about this. Don't forget to timestamp anything you want to talk about because y'all be forgetting what some of this stuff I be saying in these videos. Okay. Please like, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and I'll talk to y'all later.